on our previous discussion we have tried to see about rotational motion and the rotational motion we have tried to see about rotational dynamics as well as at last we have tried to see about work energy and power in rotating object how to apply work can be expressed as torque tau times angular displacement and energy can be classified into two for objects having translational motion the kinetic energy can be classified into two as translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy for objects in rolling it has both uh, translational and rotational kinetic energy that's why we use if among the given alternative things or among the given solid bodies which one of the objects reaches at the bottom like the disc the sphere and the hoop is previously solved the moment of inertia in the velocity has inverse relation so comparing the moment of inertia it's possible to find that which objects reach at the bottom first so this was what we have discussed previously and today let's try to discuss about the last concept of this unit and it is angular momentum so angular momentum momentum is a property of massive bodies uh, which exerts a force along its motion it's a property of massive bodies and now this concept is appears for objects having a rotational motion suppose here you have an axis in the and on that axis you have a mass or a particle of mass m and this particle has its own mass in tangential velocity v so it tends to rotate about a given fixed axis so it's possible to find the mass times the mass of the particle times the linear velocity v to be the linear momentum so if you are trying to multiply the linear momentum by the distance or the moment arm you can possibly find the moment of the angular momentum of a given object a given rotating object so linear momentum p is given to be the product of mass times velocity this is linear momentum and linear momentum can be multiplied with r or moment arm to find the angular momentum and angular momentum can be vectorially expressed as the moment arm cross the um, moment linear momentum p so r it can be expressed in terms of vector or unit vector form r x in the i r y in the j r z in the k this is the unit vector notation form of the momentum and the momentum can be expressed as since momentum is a vector quantity px i the momentum along x the momentum along y in the momentum component along the z uh, and along the k so we can cross multiply using the uh, matrix or determinant you have i j k component so we can find rx you can put the component of uh, the moment r x y and z component you can put the component of the momentum p x p y p z so we can have the i into row and colon we can eliminate row and colon you can find the product of these two so this is what we call angular momentum and angular momentum can be expressed vectorially it's a vector quantity which is a cross product of two vectors gives us a vector quantity so that it's vector if the angle between the moment arm and the velocity of the particle is given previously we have uh, the particle suppose you are trying to look it from top view it might perform like this a vertical circle you have the mass okay the mass has a tangential velocity v and here you do have the axis from the axis to this point you do have the moment arm okay r and v has their own angles here in this case it's 90 degree for simple for simplicity let's take it to be 90 degree if it has some other angles than 90 degree it's possible to use that if the angle between the velocity and the moment arm is given it's possible to use we know that the magnitude for a cross product can be given as the momentum p times the moment arm sine theta this momentum is linear momentum so to find the angular momentum linear momentum times the moment arm times sine theta theta is angle between the two quantities the angle between the momentum and the angle or the momentum between the angle between the momentum and the moment arm 
okay? Or it's possible to say between the velocity and the momentum. Then, if theta is perpendicular, as we have said previously, if theta is perpendicular, you can find the maximum angular momentum. The maximum angular momentum can be determined as mv, momentum, linear momentum can be given as mass times the linear velocity or the tangential velocity times r, sine 90 is 1. So it's possible to find angular momentum using those variables, mass times the linear velocity or tangential velocity times radius r is angular momentum. And the SI unit of angular momentum can be given as the SI unit of mass, the SI unit of linear or tangential velocity, and the SI unit of momentum can be given. So kilogram, and the SI unit of uh, velocity is meter per second, and the SI unit of momentum or displacement is mass m. So we can have kilogram meter squared over second is the SI unit of angular momentum. Or it's possible to use um, Newton meter second. Here in this case, it's possible to have kilogram meter per second times meter. You can multiply this by one as second over second. Okay? If you are trying to multiply it by one, like second over second is one, so you can put here, here. so kilogram meter per second squared, and here you have mass m times second s. Kilogram meter per second squared is Newton. Mass, and here you do have a Newton, and here you have meter, and here you have second. So Newton meter second is also the other unit, the SI unit of angular momentum. And it's also possible to express angular momentum using the angular variables. Angular variables. Previously, we have used mass times the momentum times the linear velocity is expression for angular momentum. But we know that the linear velocity v can be expressed with angular velocity as r times omega. So if you substitute it here, you can find it to be l is equal to, meaning angular momentum is equal to mass times radius r. Instead of a linear velocity, we can have r times omega. r times r gives us r squared, mr squared times omega. But mr squared is the definition of moment of inertia. Angular momentum can be given in terms of moment of inertia as i times omega. So when you put it as i here, the angular momentum of a given rotating object about a given axis can be given as moment of inertia i times the speed, the angular uh, velocity omega gives us the angular momentum of a given particle. So it's very important concept. Now let's try to see. In your linear momentum or translational momentum, as an object is moving and tending to have an obstacle along its motion, suppose here you have mass and this object has its own velocity, v, initial velocity, let's call it. As it moves and collides with other objects or obstacle, it will exert a force on this object because there will be a change in velocity. There will be a change in velocity. So final velocity minus the initial velocity, if there is a change in velocity, there will be an acceleration, okay? Acceleration times t. We can have such an expression from your kinematics concept. And this object has its own mass. If you are trying to multiply both sides by mass, if you are trying to multiply here by mass and as well by mass here, you can find that mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity is equal to mass times acceleration gives us force, okay? Force times t. Therefore, mass times velocity is the final momentum. Mass times velocity is in momentum, and this is the initial linear momentum, is force times t. And we know that, or we have defined that, the change in momentum is known to be impulse, a linear impulse. It's said to be J, or we call it to be change of momentum, change of momentum. So the same expression appears for rotating object. Here you have angular impulse. For a given rotating object, okay, we can have an expression. If you are trying to multiply the momentum with R, we can proceed further. If you are trying to multiply this by R, 
the final linear momentum minus the initial linear momentum is equal to the force F times T. If you are trying to multiply with this by R as well as by R, right, the radius. Suppose if you have a rotating object, you'd have radius R. So the final linear momentum times radius R minus the initial linear momentum times radius R is equal to force times R gives us torque times T. A linear momentum times radius R gives us, previously we have defined that here, linear momentum times radius R gives us angular momentum. If so, we can put that the final angular momentum minus the initial angular momentum is net torque. So, the change in angular momentum, meaning the final angular momentum minus the initial angular momentum, gives us the net torque exerted on a given rotating object times change in t. So the difference between two angular momentum is known to be impulse. The change of uh, angular momentum is known to be impulse, and that impulse is known to be angular impulse. Okay? Here we have said linear impulse for the change of linear momentum. But for the change of angular momentum, we have angular impulse, theta. Okay? Uh, j theta, so that's what we have found. And recall in your linear momentum, there is a so-called con conservation of linear momentum. In that conservation of linear momentum, momentum is conserved, in this case, if the impulse is zero. If impulse is zero, meaning if the change of momentum is zero, the final minus initial is zero. So the final momentum minus the initial momentum is zero. We can say that the final momentum is the same as the initial momentum. This is what you have learned in your uh, previous concept in linear motion. And momentum is conserved in one case, and that is if the net external force exerted on a given object is zero, it's possible to say that momentum is conserved. Okay, Before and after an impact, the momentum is said to be conserved. Keeping that in your mind, in this case, the final linear momentum minus the initial linear momentum is given or expressed as the net torque times t. Then how does the final and the initial angular momentum remain constant? And that is true if and only if the net torque expressed is zero. If the net torque is zero, if this quantity is zero, you can possibly say that the final angular momentum minus the initial angular momentum is zero. So we can translate this. So the final angular momentum is equal to the initial angular momentum. We can find this expression. This expression is known to be the law of conservation of momentum. So conservation of angular momentum states that the total angular momentum of a given system remains constant, both in magnitude and direction, if the net external torque acting on a given system is zero. As I said previously, if this torque quantity is zero, it's possible to say that the angular momentum remains constant. This is known to be the law of conservation of angular momentum, meaning the final angular momentum and the initial angular momentum are equal. If they are equal, uh, we have expressed angular momentum in terms of the angular variables as the initial uh, moment of inertia initial, omega, which is the angular velocity initial, is equal to, finally, we can have the moment of inertia final, the angular velocity final. This is what we call the law of conservation of angular momentum. You recall that in linear momentum, m1, u1, plus m2, u2, is equal to m1, v1, plus m2, v2. This is the law of conservation of momentum, linear momentum, for two objects in impact, actually. But in this case, we can take a single object. There might be a difference in moment of inertia. So this is what you call the law of conservation of angular momentum. Actually, among the laws of conservation of energy, conservation of mass, and so on, moment, uh, the law of conservation of angular momentum is somehow visible. Okay? How? Uh, one of the key uh, features that shows us about the law of conservation of angular momentum is usually for objects spinning. Okay? Here in this case, let's take um, a skater a skater which skates uh, on snow. Let's take that this person tends to rotate. And look at here. As she stretched her hands and tried to spin 
on a snow, her angular velocity, her angular velocity, omega, is going to be decreased. But while she collapses her hands towards her chest, her angular velocity is going to be a larger maximum. She spins faster and faster. Why is that? Whether she stretches her hands or collapses her hands, one thing is always remains constant, and that is the angular momentum. The angular momentum initial and the angular momentum final always remains constant. And we have defined angular momentum as the initial moment of inertia i, the angular velocity initial i is equal to or should be equal to the moment of inertia of this object. In this case, her final omega final. This is the expression that we have from the law of conservation of angular momentum. So, in both cases, if the angular momentum is conserved, let's say, in, let's consider it to be in numbers. Let's say that it is 100 Newton meter second. So, if she collapses her hands, the angular momentum remains constant, and it is 100 Newton meter second. If she stress her hands, the angular momentum remains again the same. It is 100 Newton meter second. But the moment of inertia and angular velocity are interchangeably increasing or varying. In this case, let's assume that the initial angular momentum of her, the skater, is say that 10, let's consider it to be 10 kilogram meter squared. Okay? If her initial angular momentum of angular uh, moment of inertia is 10 kilogram meter squared, what would happen to the velocity? They say that this is 10. Okay, for, for example, let's say that it's 10. And the velocity should be, for it to give us 100, it should be 10. Okay? And finally, the angular momentum is ag again should be 100. But one thing happens, she stretches her uh, hands. While she stretches her hands, one thing increases, the moment of inertia was previously 10. Now her hand is increased, and let's assume that it is 20. If it is 20, what's going to happen? The angular momentum should be 100. 20 times what? Gives us 100. 20 times 5. That means the angular velocity is going to be decreased. So while she collapses her hands, the, uh, she spins very, very faster because the moment of inertia is smaller and smaller. But when you are trying to increase the moment of inertia, your speed is going to be decreased. So in this case, we have a smaller moment of inertia, but a larger spinning or angular velocity. But when she stretches her hands, we do have a larger moment of inertia, so that we have a smaller angular velocity. So the product of these two is angular momentum, and angular momentum initial is the same as angular momentum final. And it's always true when you are trying to watch movies, skaters, or when you are trying to see a circus. Let's try to solve one good example. Actually, this example appears in a national exam, previously in trans exam. Here it says a planet of mass m is circulating its parent star. Here you have a star. It might be sun, or it might be another uh, star on different solar system. And they do have elliptical orbits as shown below. If its velocity at point here, we do have two points, point A and the other point is point B. Here we do have point B and here we do have point A. At this point, at this point, this planet has its own tangential velocity VA. Okay? And the tangential velocity or the linear velocity of the planet, location A is 60,000 meter per second. Now the question is, what will be the velocity of the planet as it reaches at location B? And here, the location is somehow, sometimes it's closer to the star, the parent star, and sometimes far away from the star. Okay, this is how seasons changed. Therefore, the planets are tending sometimes closer and sometimes uh, far away from the start. This is the elliptical orbit. Therefore, how do we determine the velocity of the planet as it reaches to location B? And one thing it says that the radius of the planet as it reaches to that of the location A, or the distance, is Ra. Let's assume that uh, 
the distance between the star and the planet is RB at location B. And it could, tries to compare RB with RA. It says the radius or the displacement of mm, the location B is eight times that of the distance of point A. In that case, how do we determine the velocity at point B? Well, the main concept to solve this problem is the law of angular momentum. In either position, the momentum remains the same. The angular momentum remains the same. So angular momentum at point A should always be the same as the angular momentum at point B. And we have defined angular momentum as mass of at point A, mass of the planet at point A, distance at point A, and the velocity at point A. We have defined angular momentum previously as m times r v. This is the equation that we use. Okay. Then this is the product of mass times r times linear velocity at point A must give us the mass of the planet at point B, the radius at point B, and the velocity at point B. And one thing the planet has the same mass. The mass of the planet remains whether it is at point A, at point B, or at any uh, location. The mass of point A must be equal to mass of point B unless the planet is not destroyed, so that the mass always remains constant. So we can cancel this. And radius at point A times velocity, the tangential velocity at point A must be equal to radius at point B times the tangential velocity at point B. And one thing that we have here, the radius at point B is eight times the radius at point A. So we can substitute here, R A velocity at A is equal to, R at B is A times the radius at point A, it says, okay, times the velocity at point B. So the radius at point A can be cancelled by radius at point A. So to determine the velocity of the planet at point B, you should have to divide the velocity of the, the planet at point A over 8. This is how we determine. So the result of this gives us uh, meaning we have 60,000, 60,000 divided by 8 gives us 7,500 meter per second. So the velocity of the planet at location B is this one, and it's found due to the law of conservation of uh, momentum. Here you have some more examples or exercise. So I want you to solve for this. It says 1.5 kilogram particle moves in XY plane. Uh, so that its linear velocity is given to be 4.2 in the i minus 3.6 in the j. So what is the angular momentum? The mass of the particle is given, the tangential velocity is given, and the location is also given. So we can determine this using matrix form, the equation that's previously given. You can use this concept. Here you'd have r, you can put r, and the momentum as well. The momentum is actually the product of mass times the linear velocity or the tangential velocity. So you can use matrix to solve these uh, problems. And the other point is a uniform ball of radius r and mass m starts to roll uh, from rest and rolls down on a frictionless inclined plane. So the, it asks us to find how fast its velocity okay, is going as it rests to the bottom beam. So please, students, try to solve these uh, examples. So this is all that I have got uh, for today, and we have tried to finalize our unit. So far, we have tried to discuss about rotational motion or angular motion. I have divided those as rotational kinematics, rotational dynamics. We have also seen about rotational work, energy, and power concept. And at last, we have tried to see about rotational or angular momentum. So I wish you have some good concepts about rotational motion. Next time, we'll try to see about equilibrium. So goodbye.